I set big goals, but without big goals, big dreams, you, you have nothing. Hello, and welcome to episode 41 of the Smart Agents Podcast. My name is Michael Walter, and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we're joined by Jason Anderson out of Eastern Tennessee, who in just three short years grew his business to $13 million in 2020. Prior to entering the real estate industry, Jason spent 22 years as a police officer, as well as time as an EMT in in fire rescue. Throughout our conversation, he shares how he has been able to grow his business so quickly and how his previous experience has shaped the way he does business now. Now, before we get into the day's featured interview, make sure you follow and subscribe to the show on whatever platform you listen to podcasts. You can find us on all major podcasting platforms from Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and the list goes on. Also, as you can see, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Click the bell to get notifications when each new episode is uploaded. And lastly, if you or somebody else on your team has an awesome story or a tip to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on with the day's featured interview with Jason Anderson. The way I like to start everything out is if you can tell me a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're at in the country, and just kind of your background in the industry. All right, I'm Jason Anderson, and um, my my history basically comes back from I was in uh, I was a I was an EMS and fire rescue uh, and as a police officer for 22 years. I decided to uh, get into something like this after a mentor came to me basically and said, "Hey." Um, you know, what can I do or what can I do to convince you to come to real estate? And I was like, well, I, you know, I've always been in public service. You know, what, what do, what can I do? He said, well, if you'll go to school, I'll mentor you. I'll teach you what you need to know. He said, I think you have what it takes to be successful. You know, you probably could do three to five million in your first year. And I said, bet. I, I, that sounds like a game, you know, and I started looking at the numbers versus being a police officer versus being real estate. And I said, uh, you know, I, I kind of put those numbers together and I, and, and, and I started looking at a, at a big pattern, I guess you could say. It was like, okay, I can make a little bit or I can make a whole lot of money. And uh, so, so with that being said, uh, my first year, I did $7.8 million uh, in the real estate industry. Um, that was just me and my wife. Um, she had uh, quit a banking job for set, that she'd been at 17 years. Uh, she quit that. Um, and uh, she got her license. She's pretty much been my transaction coordinator. Uh, she takes care of all that stuff, and I take care of the face and the voice of the, of the world. So um, that that's pretty much where we at. Um, the next year, uh, we did nine point eight million, which I was shooting for a diamond award. Is what I was shooting for. Uh, the diamond award is that of uh, ten million and above, and I missed it literally by like two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. My year, and I was just like, oh my gosh, you know, here, here we are, you know, I'm $200,000 shy. And I thought this is God's way of saying, you're just not quite ready for that yet, but Hey, you know, I'm okay with that. So, right. so in the COVID year uh, of 2020, uh, we wound up doing 13 million. I got my diamond award for the year, uh, which was a very big success thing for me. It was like, you know, once you make it to the Diamond Award uh, of all the people in the Eastern Middle Tennessee area, basically you've got, um, I think there's 1,700 maybe that's in our Eastern Middle Tennessee Association of Realtors. And to be among 65 people of wow. 1,700 that actually makes that, well, you know, that's, that's, a, that's an accomplishment. And that's something that I wanted to do. Uh, and, and we did and, and blew it out. So I, I, I want to continue that on. And uh, once I made it, I said, once I make it, I want to start a team. I want to do what I do. Um, so then uh, that's where Heather Carter came in. And, and I'll, I'll tell you, she's a new agent. But this is, the, this is the thing that impressed me with her. And I've told her this numerous times. The day I met her was introduced to her. Um, it, was, uh, it was one of those things of, Hey, this is Heather, you know, Heather meet Jason. And I was like, well, Hey, you know, nice to meet you and everything. So we talked and, and we kind of hit it off and we talked about business cards and this and that, you know, I really honestly thought she would be an agent doing the volume I, I was doing. 
I mean, there's there's no no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Um, come to find out during our conversation, she'd only been an agent since like January. <laughs> well, that's when I swapped to Keller Williams, and and uh, you know, so so she and I both really you know new to the Keller Williams culture. And of course, I knew how to sell real estate, and I know how to do things, but you know, uh, Gary Keller preaches about the um, about the KW culture. Well, let me tell you that I, now that I'm with KW. I just don't think there's going to be any other culture that I want to be a part of just because, I mean, the training, the environment, the people, man, the, the camaraderie. I mean, you know, as they say, we're not the cheapest, but what value can you add? You know, and, and the value in the backside really makes it for me. So now I'm doing some training uh, in the in the company, uh, doing that. Heather is now my buyer's agent. Um, she's got 10 or 11 deals working right now to – you know, that, that she's got personally uh, that I, I give her. So, I mean, she's, she's just coming out swinging like a, a, the fences. And of course, I'm now it gives me time to do more listing. Uh, now that I'm doing that, I can focus more on that. So as a, as a team and group, we hope to hit the 20 million mark today, uh, this year. That's, that would be my goal was to hit 20 million this year. Right. Well, going back to kind of getting started in it, you know, what was that when you were first approached with the, Hey, why don't you join, you know, kind of get into this industry? What did you have any appreh- app- apprehensions? I mean, you said you, you kind of went through the numbers and, you know. Well, you know, I'm just one of those people that, I mean, I just feel like, um, you know, God opens doors for us every day. And, you know, it, it was getting to the point to where I didn't want to go to work. You know, the, the country it was changing. The, you know, if you was a police officer, no matter how good you were or how decorated you were, you were hated, you know, and, and, and every day I put on that uniform, I was like, man, you know, this is just another day. I've got to go to work, you know. And, and when this come open, it was almost like, you know, you know, big light bulb <laughs> come on. And it was like, yeah. you know, maybe I could do this. And, and I had flirted with some sales. Uh, I've done some fire alarm sales and things like that. Well, you know, they say you'll know when you're doing something right is because your passive income will outdo your regular income, you know. Yeah. And, and I read it in books all the time and, you know, you don't really think about it, but in the, in the firearm industry as part time, I earned a trip to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. I, I got um, three people in the business with me, got three sales for them. I mean, it was just like, I mean, I was exploding and, and if I wanted to just go to that business again. I could do it because sales just, I guess, seemed to be my part of, you know, what does good for me. Um, but however, that kind of got my, my feet into it. And then when this other offer came to me, I was like, you know what, maybe, maybe I should look at something like this, you know, uh, what, was it scary? Absolutely. I'll, I'll say that all day long. It's scary. Um, when you, when you get into, when you get into something like this and you've been a 22 year career mm-hmm. veteran of, of doing, you know, police and fire and EMS and a wife that's 17 years, you know, here we are, we just built a new house. I mean, we're like, are we doing the right thing or, or not? You know? And uh, I just have that, um, I just have that no fail attitude. I mean, I'm not going to fail. And, and I still keep that attitude today that no matter what, I'm not going to fail. If the market crashes, I'm going to figure out what I need to do in the market to still make money. I'm going to do, you know, this. And so now I'm, I'm working on some investment stuff and strategies and uh david huffaker is of course i'm sure most people that listens to this probably would know who he is um david is uh is a i mean he's he's an op of our company he owns several different places you know throughout the country he has some expansion teams and expansion offices Mm -hmm. you know i get i get a personal one-on-one maybe an hour a week with him because of my volume that i do uh you know, and, and now he's teaching us how to take what we're doing and learn other things, you know, like, Hey, real estate may not be all of it. What can you do here? What can you do there? You know, how can you put your money to somewhere to good use and, uh, and, and make it work for you? Well, you know, that helps when the market downturns some, or if, it, when it does, uh, they're saying we're still good maybe to, you know, 2024, uh, in our area for sure here in Tennessee. Um, you know, everybody's moving to Tennessee. I don't care where you're from. You can say, where are you moving to? Tennessee. Uh, (laughs) It it doesn't matter. Everybody loves Tennessee right now. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where, you know, that leads. 
So. Right. Well, and it, it really sounds like, you know, starting out, you had that goal of hitting the, the diamond club. So you, you really, you kind of set some pretty big goals for yourself, but go after them. And I think that's so important for when you're getting into this business, you know, you can't just kind of coast along your first few years, you're going to get left behind pretty quick. That's correct. And, and, you know, I set big goals, but without big goals, big dreams, you, you have nothing. I mean, you know, um, like, like I, I was joking the other day that I wanted to buy a helicopter because I thought it'd make it faster getting the listings, you know, but, but then what's the reality of that? Can you really sit down a helicopter at every house, you know, you know, I may still have to walk a mile, but, but, but just, you know, you have to, you have to have a goal. You have to have a dream. I mean, for sure. Uh, without goals and dreams, we just, I mean, we, we sit and spin, you know, uh, I noticed that you've got some, some pretty cool books back there on the, on your back wall. That must be your, your top list of, of <laughs> eight or 10 that, that, that need to be read. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, so when you were getting into it and kind of going through that, you know, that first year and you were seeing the success, what, you know, what were you doing to achieve that success so quickly? Well, I, I tell you, the, the biggest thing was, is, is a guy named Bill Sparkman. I, I very first got into this business. Uh, Eastern Middle Tennessee Association of Realtors put that, put it out. He was a guy that's just, I mean, he, he's, he's down to earth. You know, he's, he's like one of those people that's like, Hey, you want to, if you want a job, this is how you do it. If you want to do it, this is what you do. And he said one thing, one thing that I can give you one thing. He said, get out of the office, go do work. Don't forget the old fashioned way. And I said, and, and then he said, get out of the office, get out of the office, get out of the office. He said, that's the first five rules. And I said, okay, so basically what you're saying is you got to get out of the office. So, so, you know, and, and I took that to what it was, you know, because a lot of people forget these days, you know, we, we do this kind of communication, you know, uh, text, email, phone, you know, they forget that, Hey, let's go to Lowe's. Let's go to a coffee shop. Let's go to wherever. I mean, I wear a color branded logo everywhere I go. Um, I talk to people, you know, Hey, you know, what kind of property do you have? You know, you look into sale, you're looking to buy, you know, I'm always constantly engaging people. And, and my goal really, and that's kind of what got me to where I'm at is engaging people uh, like maybe 10 a day uh, to start with. Sometimes I could be up to 30 people a day I engage. Um, but for the most part, it's, uh, it, you know, having to get out and go places and engage people that's where that's that's where you become successful in real estate. Sitting in the office on a computer, doing what you you know, hoping that the business will come to you is not the way to do it. Uh, social media presence, you know, all that is what kind of you know, and, and and it don't it's not just one thing. I, and and if I say, you know, hey, if you go out and talk to ten people a day, you're going to be successful. That's not necessarily the case. You're going to have to do other things, you know, as far as. Um, you're going to have to get out and, and do that. You're going to have to do some follow-ups. Follow-ups is a big thing, you know, because there's people that have, I have called and talked to and then turn right back around 15 minutes later, call back and say, I just want to see if he's going to answer your phone just like he did just a few <laughs> minutes ago, you know, and, and, and people test you. I mean, they test you. They, they want to know your knowledge. They, you know, they may call up and ask just some off the wall question. It's like, depending on how you answer that question is to how, you know, they respond to you and, and whatever. Cause I mean, Here's the thing. Buying a house is one of your biggest things you ever do in your life. I mean, I'm sure you're a homeowner, right? Right. Yes, sir. How, how stressful was it? You right. know, <laughs> I mean, and if you have somebody like like myself that can go out here and really, truly hone in and, and find, you know, your skills, you know, like, hey, what's your what's your top thing? What's your you know, what is, is a fenced backyard is a pool is a is a garage and I'm a hot rodder guy. So a garage has got to be my thing. If I don't have a garage and, you know, I've got $30,000 worth of stuff just sitting out, you know, in, in the rain and I'm not doing that, you know, it's, I've got to have that. So, you know, I think listening to people and finding out what, what they want is the biggest thing you could ever do in this business. Right. Well, and also your background in the EMS and the policing, you were talking to, you know, people from all walks of life every single day. Absolutely. And I think that, and that, that really helps out this industry too, because you can talk to anybody. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, not only that, um, you know, I can and, and I can conform. Uh, I read a book one time called Personality Plus. 
and I'm sure you may have read that uh, over time, being, being the guy you are to try to figure out, you know, how to talk to people. Uh, you know, when you morph into what other people are, you know, I'm very high strung. I'm, I'm a very alpha male. I, I, I've, I've got to be the king of the jungle. You know, that's, that's just, that's me. But I can also say, bring myself down to that level to where I can communicate with you and still get my point across and what I need to do. And, and that's a big thing is adapting to, you know, what other people are and, and you hit on it. I mean, it's, it's just, you've got to be what other people are. Uh, and, and that every day, you know, makes a, makes a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. And that's definitely something that is, uh, you know, in, in most people's cases is, is learned over the time, you know, their first couple of years in real estate, just having those conversations. Luckily for you, you had that experience coming in, but it's definitely one of those skills that you have to hone. I, I definitely think, you know, uh, you asked something earlier about, you know, did I have any, you know, like animosity or like, oh my gosh, you know, what, what comes into this thing? Uh, you know, I, I really think God opens doors for you as you go in life. Uh, you know, had I not been uh, in the EMS version, I wouldn't have been a good police officer. If I wasn't a good police officer, I wouldn't have been good in sales. If I wasn't this, I wouldn't be that, you know, uh, you know, and I, I really feel like that, that throughout life, God has made a stepping stone for me, starting me out from 18. You know, I want to be a police officer at 18. Well, I couldn't be a police officer because you had to be 21. Well, so I said, well, I'll go to EMS for a few years, do EMS. I really loved it. I loved the fireside. I loved everything about it. I still felt like I had to pursue my dream. And like, I need to be a police officer. I have to do that. Well, then I got into that. I've done it for uh, 12 years. Uh, I've, I've done everything from working in jail to the courts, to patrol, to governor highway safety office. I mean, I went to meth, uh, the meth task force. I, I went to everything. I, I mean, it was like I finally got to the point where I felt like I was tapped out. Like, I got to have something more. Well, this is my more. And now I can give 110% all day, every day. And there's nobody telling me, hey, slow down. You know, you can't arrest everybody. You can't do that. Hey, now I can go 120%. Who's going to stop me? Surely there's, I mean, all, the only competition I have is myself now. It's like, you know, I set a goal. I break it. I make it. That's where I'm at. You know, that's uh, that's really all I have in, in, anymore is just that goal set. Right. And then so in expanding on that a little bit. Tell me about how, how do you structure your goals so that you do, you are hitting them? Is that something that you, you know, you kind of pin there, you have a set date for certain things that you want to hit, or is it kind of like the yearly thing that we were talking about earlier? I, I think goals should be revisited every three, three to three to six months. I mean, you know, if, if, you know, I'm at 20 million for the year and, you know, we're in our first quarter, obviously I can look over at my board over here and, and I can see that, you know, I, I'm somewhere, you know, 3 million, 4 million right now kind of in a pipeline, well, I know I have to either ramp that up or I have to make a, a goal a little bit less, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, and it's not, it's not a bad thing to change a goal. You know, I'm at 20 million right now. I'll tell you my goal is 20 million for this year, but you know, if I can hit a solid 20 or like 15, 18, I'm okay with that, you know, because, because here's the thing, it's still more than I did last year. It, it's, but you know, um, and people sometimes set goals so hard that it's like they, they get to the point. And I've done this my first couple of years. I set them so hard. It's like I'm, I'm doing diamond. I want to do my diamond the first year. Well, I fell short. But look at the success I had getting to that point. You know, that's that's the point you have to look at. Like, like literally, you know, set a goal. Set a goal that's unattainable if that's what it is. But a, a goal that's more in balance, you know, if – if you feel like, okay, for instance, if I want to go run a mile, you know, could I just take off and go run a mile? Most people can't. But if I run to the end of my driveway three times a week, you know, it's 260 feet. Mm -hmm. You know, how many, how many feet's in a mile? You know, right. 580. You know, we, I mean, we know that because it's, we were in grain. How many times did I have to do that before I now run a mile? You know, right. It, we, we have to look at our goals that way and break them down. And if you look at them every three, five months, six months, uh, you know, kind of where it's at, you know, um, and, and, and knowing a big thing that I learned when I come to Keller William is your big why, you know, why do you get up every day to do what you do? Why do you do it? 
And, you know, my, my biggest why was is to be with my family mm-hmm. and, and be able to homeschool my children, to be able to be with my children, be able to travel, be able to do things, you know, it, it, and this allows me to do that kind of stuff, right. you know, um, because obviously, you know, I can't do that on a police officer salary. Right. I obviously can't, you know, make things, um, I guess you could say work on, you know, uh, I, I guess investment helps me, you know, be able to do that. But, but ultimately, even if I don't go anywhere, but in here and, and just watch a movie with my kids, you know, mm-hmm. I can still answer my phone. I can still be available. I can still do things, but the, 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 the life of a real estate agent is wide open. I mean, I literally, uh, I think I, I probably could show you my phone. Even yesterday, Easter Sunday, I took probably eight real estate calls related yesterday. So it never sleeps. Even on Easter Sunday, right. you know, when everybody should be worshiping the Lord and, 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 and what it's about, right. I'm still getting calls. I mean, my wife said, my wife made a, made a comment about, I guess, about 1030. She goes, wow. She says, I can't believe it. Your phone's not blowing off the hook today. <laughs> well, jinx. Right. A couple minutes later. <laughs> five calls right after that. And it was right. like, okay, so, so here you go. You say it, it happens, you know? Um, and, and I really think that that's, you know, it, it's a great business to be in and helping people has been my favorite part of it. You know, it's kind of coming from the EMS and the fire and the police world. Um, it's, it's more of a, you know, when you're in that environment, you want to help people, you know, th- that's, that's why you get into that business. Well, this business is one of those to help people. I'm doing something to help them accomplish the biggest thing in their lifetime now. You know, purchasing a home and buying a home and owning it, man, that's that's an American dream. I mean, everybody wants to own a home. I mean, not, not everybody. I want to say, you know, 95% of the population wants to. Right. But, you know, some people just want to live in a condo so they don't have to mow the grass and do whatever. But that's still a home. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, it's, it, it's, I really believe that it's an American dream and, and being able to help, um, kind of where it's at. And, I, and I'll tell you this, um, uh, and I won't say their names, but, um, a $69,000 house right now to date is my favorite piece of property I sold. And, um, you know, th- this couple was, they had worked for four or five months trying to get their credit done. I stayed with them the whole time. Uh, we, we done what we done. Uh, we put a contract in on the house. Um, it just, it fell through this little house came up. It was a little two bedroom house on top of a hill, you know, just, it it was perfect for them, you know? And, uh, and I went in to it at pretty aggressive. I said, Hey, if we're going to do it, well, let's do full price. Let's, you know, this, let's be where we are because we're below your budget. Their budget was like 130,000. I said, here's the thing, live in it for a few years. And then, you know, we'll, we'll go to that bigger house if you want to do bigger. Well, so far they've been there. I think this is their third year, two, two and a half years, I think right now. And, and they they have no plans to change. I mean, right. they love it. I mean, we, we literally bought a house that they love. Now they're homeowners. They, they are not throwing money away for rent. You know, that, that's, that's the kind of stuff that really hits home to you and gets an old heart, you know, that, that you know that you help somebody become a homeowner at 69,000. Well, most realtors are not even fooling with that kind of stuff. They're like, you know what? I, I ain't fooling with that. Cause you know what my commission is on that? I mean, you do the math, you know, 69,000 at, at 3%, if you make a full 3% and tell me what you're making, you know, and you still got to put the same time in as you do on an $800,000 house. Most realtors set a standard and say, I'm not doing that. Well, I think if you, the more of those kind of people you help, the more other things come in, you know, and that's, that's just my opinion to it. Right. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. I mean, it definitely sounds yeah. like this is definitely the, uh, the right place for you to be. Well, I, I appreciate that. And, and like I say, it's, it's an honor to, to, you know, be able to talk to somebody like this and, and, and kind of put your story out there to where it's at. And, and uh, hopefully we can do this again sometime and, and maybe on a bigger scale or something. So that would be, that would be awesome. And thank you for your time. I really want to thank Jason for taking the time to share his story with us and hope him continued success. So once again, if you think you or somebody else on your team has an awesome story or tip to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. 
Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walton, and we'll see you on the next episode.